I'm Amber B. Shells with Let Love Be Your Bean. And today we have Julia Blackwell. She is the owner of Movement by Julia, um, and she works with fascia. Fascia. Like, what is that? That's like such a word that we don't normally hear about or what it is. So can you tell me a little bit about what is fascia? Totally. It's been a buzzword recently where some people are saying that they're working with fascia, uh, but a lot of people definitely do not know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> so fascia is your connective tissue. Those are interchangeable terms. Okay. And it's like this wonderful complex web that goes throughout your whole body. Uh, my favorite analogy is that it's like plastic wrap. Okay. And it wraps around every single thing that's in your body. So it wraps around every muscle fiber, all of your muscle fibers together form a group. It wraps around your bones, your nerves, your organs, and your blood vessels. Do. Ooh, great question. Yeah. <laughs> so your fascia, of course, connects everything together and is responsible for your shape, your texture, and your structure. Okay. So my another great analogy I love is if everything were to magically disappear out of your body, except for your fascia, you would still look pretty much like you. Okay. That is how essential it is to maintaining your shape. Okay. On the flip side, if only your fascia disappeared out of your body, you would go tumbling to the floor in a pile of bones and goo. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a, a very overlooked thing, but it's the most abundant tissue that we have. Okay. And it plays a bunch of different roles in the body, which I could nerd out forever on the science of all the different things that it does. But the main takeaway is that it connects everything. The second takeaway I would say is that it is your shock absorbing system. Okay. So it's able to contract independently of your muscles and help distribute shock throughout your body. Oh, wow. So how does that relate to pain? Yeah, so when your body gets in a certain pattern of repetitive motion, maybe you're sitting on your couch all day watching Netflix, or maybe on the other end of the spectrum, you're doing CrossFit seven days a week. All of these things outside of the normal movement of your body can cause tightness and restriction in certain areas of the fascia. And because it's so responsible for the way your body is structured, right? Mm -hmm. If things start to get tight because you're sitting like this all day, maybe you're sitting like this all day. The classic one, I'm like <laughs> on my computer all the time. So I'm like, or I'll like be laying in bed and I'm like everything will hurt because yeah. I'm not having proper <laughs> alignment. Yeah, your body is a result of demand. So whether that's sitting all the time, or maybe let's say you're swinging a golf club repeatedly, your body's going to start to move into a position that's going to be uh, what it thinks is more efficient for the activity that you're doing. But what happens is that if something's in this position for a long enough period of time, um, if we go back to thinking of fascia like plastic wrap, it's like that plastic wrap starts to get all crinkled up. Okay. And it's so hard to get it unstuck. Yeah. Have you ever had <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm imagining plastic wrap right now. I'm like, like when I'm like wrapping cookies or anything else, I'm like, I, yeah. So I can definitely see the yeah. visual. It's infuriating to try, you know, get those yeah. to pull back out, but things can start to crinkle up into those little balls. And then your body is attempting to go back and moving its full natural range of motion and those little balls of plastic wrap that are stuck together aren't letting your body move that way. Yeah. And when you can't move in that full range of motion, pain typically happens. Okay. So quads are my top 
your right. recommendation. Okay. Um, that's what's affecting. Anywhere from the mid quad up tends to affect uh, your back positively. So if you're down by the knees, it may help you make your knees feel a little bit looser and lighter. Yeah. Um, but if we're talking specifically about the low back, um, I would stay from the mid quad up. Okay. And then I'm also going to recommend you do your IT bands. I'm really excited to see your face on this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So your IT band is this length of muscle, although it is mainly fascia, that goes up the side of your thigh right here. Okay. So what we're gonna do to start is have you pick a side, and we're gonna lay on that side, and now it's like we're doing a side plank here. Okay. Can you bring our feet off the ground? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so if that feels really intense, what I'm gonna do is drop your top foot down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top. Yep, your bottom leg has to be off the ground. Oh. Ah, okay. So from here, I'm gonna have you just put a light flex in your foot, just a little bit of from the chest. And then, kind of like we were doing on the last one, we're gonna bend your heel back if you're doing it. So just take your time. Come back, and then slowly straightening it back out. Yeah, how's that feeling? Good. Okay, good, nice. And coming back. Surprisingly, I actually feel it here. Interesting. Okay. Nice. See if you can roll down a little bit further. Okay, and then let's do again uh, the bending back and straightening. Okay. Nice. Okay. <laughs> and then I also want to try one where you bend your knee back and then lift your heel up towards the ceiling. And then down towards the floor. <laughs> and then lift your knee up towards the ceiling. Yeah. And down towards the floor one last time. So that's that cross fibering motion, right? Cross fibering. 
So if we're rolling up and down the quads like this, like you'd normally see someone rolling on the roller, right? It's, you know, something like this, right? You see people going back and forth like this. Mm -hmm. It's uh, lacking that compression of the one spot that really needs it. And when you're rolling, you're going with the grain of the muscle fiber. So when we're talking about fascia on a microscopic level, it's this web, right? Mm -hmm. But when you zoom out a little bit, your fascia often looks like the grain that you would see in wood, where the grain is all going in one direction. So with your quads, the grain is going with the muscle. So your quad is starting up here, it's going down the length towards your knee. So in order to cross fiber it with the compression, we actually need to do that side to side motion because that's going to go perpendicular to the way that the fibers run. So that is the way to truly get fascia to move in transition from the place that it's stuck. Um, you're not going to get that same result simply going with the grain, if you will, up and down. So with the back, do you do it on all angles then? So quads are my top Your recommendation. Top okay. um, so that's what's affecting. Anywhere from the mid quad up tends to affect uh, your back positively. So if you're down by the knees, it may help to make your knees feel a little bit looser and lighter. Yeah. Um, but if we're talking specifically about the low back, um, I would stay from the mid quad up. Okay. Okay, for the next recommendation, I am going to suggest that we roll the IT bands, which okay. is a length of muscle, although it is mostly fascia, that run from the side of your knee up to the top of your hip. Okay. Uh, you might be familiar with like IT band syndrome. People often use that as a potential cause of knee pain, although that's a story for another time. Okay. Uh, this is a great spot to release in order to relieve your low back pain. So I'm excited to see your face after doing the quad <laughs> one. I'm nervous. <laughs> um, so we're going to get on, on the IT band okay. with the roller, and it looks essentially like a side plank. So we're going to start with the side of your leg on this roller, your elbows under your shoulder, and we're just stacking everything here. Okay. I'm going to help you if you need it here. Can you bring your feet off the ground? Woo! Yep. <laughs> so if that feels really intense, what I'm going to have you do is drop your top foot down. Yes, yes, yes. Drop top. Yep, your bottom leg has to be off the ground now. Okay. Okay. So from here, I'm going to have you just put a light flex in your foot, just a little bit of from the toes. And then kind of like we were doing on the last one, we're going to bend your toe back with your inner hamstring curl. Just take your time. Coming back. And then slowly straightening it back out. Ooh, yeah. How's that feeling? Good. Okay, good. Nice. And coming back. Surprisingly, I actually feel it here. Interesting. Okay. So that's what I mean. Okay. See if you can kneel down a little bit further. Yeah. Okay. And then let's do again uh, the bending back and straightening. I know. Nice. <laughs> and then I also want to try one where you bend your knee back and then lift your heel up towards the ceiling and then down towards the floor. And then lift your knee up towards the ceiling. Yeah. And down towards the floor one last time. So that's that cross fibering motion, right? We're yeah. going to cross it and down. And you can feel, you can feel it. That's exactly what you're saying. So yep. that's awesome. Same thing. That those fibers are going up and down. So that dropping the heel up and down is going to help cross fiber it. So the IT band doesn't really lengthen um, because it is fascia and it's there for structural support um, almost more than it is to fire like a muscle. Um, but a lot of times the IT band fascia gets stuck to the quad fascia. Fascia is not polite. It does not just perfectly go around each muscle neatly. It's this crazy hodgepodge of web material and that grain material, right? So um, cross fibering that way helps unstick the IT band if it's stuck to the quad, um, which again can be pulling off the pelvis and creating low back pain. Yeah. So these two are a really cool combo um, to do that you may not be doing. Most people think, oh, my low back hurts, I should roll my low back. That's yeah. what I would think. <laughs> so I was thinking, right, no, my low back. Or, they, or they'll hold on to that and like, they'll rub those spots instead of rubbing other areas for your alignment. Yes, and that's that's what I hope to offer people as uh, a good level of inspiration here. If you've been going to the doctor and they've only been looking at your back for a solution and nothing seems to be helping as people have been working on your back, it's most likely because the problem is not in the back. It is in another area 
of your fascia by pulling you slightly out of alignment and then creating the pain signal. Yeah. So pain is just a signal. And many times we immediately assume that physical pain in our body means that there's physical damage to our body. And your body doesn't know the difference between, like let's say I took a running dive across this carpet and got all this horrible carpet burn. Yeah. Uh, I would get that pain signal in my body like, ow, uh, this is damaged. But if your pelvis has a tiny torque in it, and now your spine is sitting on a slightly out of alignment and unstable surface, your pain signal is going to go off because your body is doing the same thing like, hey, something is not right and there's a threat. Right. And I can't tell what it is. Uh, like your body can't tell the difference between the threat of a physical injury or a threat internally in your body. Um, so it's cool to work these other areas and then see yeah. what your body does because a lot of times suddenly that pain signal goes down and it's a cool way to improve your own body awareness and really understand what your body needs to relieve pain and gives you hope that like oh that's because no one's been working on the right areas so right far. right because <laughs> i even had cool. like one of our viewers was saying that they had pain in their back and it won't go away they've gone to chiropractors they've gone to all these people but still and they tell them to do certain things and then they'll do it of course they did say that you want to be consistent and i think consistency is a huge thing totally um, <laughs> but besides that they, they try all these different things and it hasn't been working so maybe this would be a good thing for them to do and also like i didn't know how to use certain things i think they said like oh we'll use a form or like okay but you don't know how to actually use it besides what you see other people doing absolutely so it's it's the method of compressing and cross fibering, but then there's also in a way to be intentional about this. It's like, oh, I have to foam roll, but it doesn't mean you're just kind of rolling all over your body and hoping for the best. Mm -hmm. uh, I love teaching people like, here are specific pain patterns. Like, low back pain is often coming from the quads, so let's let's do a technique on your quads with this method, and then move around and see how you feel, and then in real time you get to discover what's helpful, what's uh, what doesn't change it, maybe in a rare instance, like what's counterproductive, but most of the time you're getting all of these amazing answers of like, ooh, this thing helped. And then you can build your own program and get in touch with your own body and really take back your power of healing yourself if you yourself know like, ooh, my body's telling me that this feels good, so I'm gonna keep doing this thing. Um, that's super empowering instead of waiting and hoping this person, your doctor, your chiropractor, whoever, sorry to call out chiropractors, they're not all like in a typical Western medicine uh, on that train, but you're not having to look to someone else all the time to be like, please fix me. I hope that this works out. Uh, you have to do this work in order to fix me. It's like, what does your body say? Your body yeah. has an incredible capacity to heal itself. And when your conscious brain knows what to do to get out of pain, that's like, so empowering. empowering, beautiful combo. Yeah, so empowering. And then you're able to really um, feel confident. And I think that's a big part of it, of any type of healing, is feeling confident about like what you're doing, what you're offering, and stuff like that, which is like amazing. Absolutely. Um, so I want to thank you, Julie, Julia, <laughs> um, for coming and teaching how to relieve your fascia once again. Uh, Julia owns Movement by Julia. Um, you guys can check her out with the link below.